One of SEC media days, and according to ESPN Bet, Georgia is the favorite to win this year's national championship. They've been terrific, obviously, over the last three seasons. They have as many national titles as they do losses all together. Two championships, and they've lost just two games. A reminder, there are now 16 schools in the SEC. Texas and Oklahoma officially join. The Longhorns, of course, coming off a playoff appearance. They are the second favorites uh, to win the SEC this year. And the biggest change for the first time since 2006, Nick Saban no longer on the sideline at Alabama. Kalen DeBoer comes over from Washington to replace him. And earlier this morning here on Get Up, Paul Feinbaum had this reaction. But number two, and this is self-serving here, since January 10th, this has been the worst six months of my life without Nick Saban. I wanted to get that off my chest as we begin the college football season. Nick, you have ruined the life of our friend Paul Feinbaum. <laughs> hey, welcome. What is your reaction to, uh, to Sir Paul? Well, he tried to ruin mine for 17 years, so I guess <laughs> we're even. <laughs> <laughs> that is beautifully played. This is the first time that we have had you since the announcement that you've joined us here at ESPN. I, I personally could not be more thrilled to have you with us, and I hope we can have these conversations regularly. And, and so let's, let's dive in here. I mentioned Kalen DeBoer takes over for you. You took over at a lot of programs, some of which had had a, a good success before you arrived. None that had ever, of course, accomplished what you just did at Alabama over the last 15 or so years. So what advice do you have for the coach as he sets out now in this incredibly competitive conference? Well, I think, first of all, Caitlin's done a really good job in the transition. Uh, but I think the most important thing for him is, you know, how do we get started? Can we play with consistency early? You know, you got players buying into a new offense, players buying into a new defense. Uh, so for them to have a little success early uh, would go a long way to – solidify that buy-in so that they can play with confidence and be successful in the future. You know, a question that I probably would have phrased differently a year ago at this time, um, but seems reasonable now, is surrounding Georgia being the clear-cut favorite to win this conference. And as I mentioned, they are the betting favorite in the country. Do you look at it as we start this thing as though Georgia is the team to beat? Well, I, I think Georgia has a, a really good team. I think Texas has a really good team. But I also think there's six or seven teams in the SEC who could be playoff teams. So if you take all that into consideration and these people are all playing each other, uh, it's hard to know exactly who's going to come out on top. I mean, it's almost like mu musical chairs, you know, trying to predict who's going to sit down first. So uh, I, I think it's because of the structure of the conference now with 16 teams and the kind of schedule you got to play and – no divisions, you know, all those things are going to, you know, sort of weigh into who has the most success. And it always, you know, happens that if you can stay healthy and you're lucky and the good players on your team stay uh, focused on what they need to do, that that's going to help you be successful. So a lot of factors go into making a prediction like that right now. Well, Texas and Oklahoma, obviously, I mean, storied programs, all of the history that they bring, all of the tradition, and now they join the SEC. H how would you put into words how it changes the dynamic? You, you just mentioned some of the particulars, no, no divisions and all the rest of that. But how does it change things for the conference and for the coaches in it to have Texas and Oklahoma join? Well, I think it makes everybody's, you know, road a little bit more difficult to hoe. But at the same time, uh, you know, I think it's going to be different for Texas and Oklahoma. They're going to be playing in a conference now where uh, they're going to have to play really, really well week in and week out. I think that was always the big thing about the SEC. You know, you'd play, you know, well, I think one year we played nine teams in the top 20. Uh, so you're always playing really good competition. So your team has to learn how to play with consistency and performance, not be up and down, play really well one week and not so well the next week. So I think that's going to be the big transition for those two schools is they're going to have to play well every week. And the structural change also, I, I have to think factors in here somewhere, which is to say in, in the era you're talking about, one loss could very well have just essentially ended your hopes and dreams for the season. We don't live in that world anymore in this world of a 12-team playoff. How does that impact in your mind? If you were coaching today, how would that impact the way you prepared your team for a season? Well, our teams usually reacted well to a loss, but we would only typically have maybe one, maybe two. But um, I, I think the most important thing that players have to understand now is you don't have to go undefeated. 
Uh, you can lose a game. How you respond to that loss is going to be critical to how you, you know, maintain the kind of consistent, consistency and success you need to be where you need to be at the end of the year. And I think, um, you know, one of the most difficult things for the committee is going to be take Florida baseball this year. They mm. go nine and nine in the SEC and they end up almost winning the World Series. So with the competition as it is in the SEC and the number of good teams, the number of good quarterbacks, um, people are going to beat each other up. And how do you weigh that against other conferences who maybe don't have the same kind of balance from top to bottom? I think it's going to be interesting to see how they manage that. That if the criteria that, is ex uh, that we will be using to determine the 12 teams this coming season had been in place at the end of last season, that 10 of the 12 schools that wound up, it would have wound up in this playoff, currently are playing in the combination of the ACC and the Big Ten. So the structure now is totally different. You're going to have the four highest ranked conference champions that are going to get the first round by. You're going to have five, the five highest conference champions are all going to get in, including uh, a, a team from the, the group of five. So things are going to change, and the, the SEC is going to actually be limited in that regard in the number of schools. The SEC and the Big Ten, which we I think we all feel are the two premier conferences, will be somewhat limited. Is that the right way to do this? Well... Look, I got a little different theory on that. I, I, the people really want to see the 12 best teams, just like the t people wanted to see the four best teams get in the playoffs. And, you know, we talk about conference championships, but the conferences are not equal. Uh, so that makes it very difficult. Uh, so somebody's going to get bumped out. Um, maybe the 11th or 12th team is going to get bumped out because of a conference champion who may not even be in the top 12. So... Uh, there's still a little bit of um, inconsistency there and in how do we get the best 12 teams in the playoffs. Well, what you're going to find in a, in a new way, you obviously have been very um, connected to the passion of college football fans, particularly those who have followed your programs and those that you compete against. But as you now join us here and work on College Game Day and are going to the, – the, the passion of college football fans across the country is something that still boggles my mind as I have watched it grow over my 30 years – in this industry, and I believe that this is actually going to, it will grow as a result of this. I think that the idea that teams can lose a game or two along the way, as you pointed out, I actually believe it will make the regular season even more compelling along the way. How do you see that impacting the way college football is consumed this year? Well, I don't think there's any question about it because, you know, in the past, we're picking four teams, and maybe there's seven or eight teams in the end of November um, that has a chance to be one of those four teams. Now, with 12 teams getting in, you're going to have 25 fan bases that are all going to still be in play. And I think, you know, that kind of competition, um, and I, I think that's the thing that's great about the NFL. If everybody went 8-8 eight and eight in the NFL going into the 17th week of the season, the mm -hmm. league would be happy because every fan base would be involved. So the more fan bases you can keep involved, and have hope that their team has a chance to get in the playoffs, I think it's going to make it even more exciting. I, I agree. I, I think we're set up for a fantastic year, and obviously you'll be in the middle of so much of it. Uh, and I would ask you just in closing, because this is the first time I've had a chance to talk to you since, uh, now that stuff is starting, I mean, you walked away from the game, and, and, and now that things are really getting underway, that this would have been, I guess, one of your first official moments here, being at SEC Media Days, that line of reporters that have been waiting to talk to you, um, how do you feel? How, how, how does it feel for the first time in literally decades, basically your entire adult life, to be on a different side of this now? Well, it's a little different. Um, I've never worn a credential in my life uh, <laughs> and was always for 17 years able to get into SEC Media Day without a credential. Uh, I had to go back to the room today and get my credential to get in. So that, that's, that's one of the biggest changes I see is it's not like it used to be. I, I would love to have been there when someone said to you, uh, Coach Saban, I'm sorry, we can't allow you in here without a credential. That's a conversation I would, I, I hope someone got that on film. Did you happen to notice anyone with a camera when that was happening? No one on camera, but the okay. people were very polite. Um, so it was, it was, it was okay. Coach, we love it. I mean, I, I can't tell you how excited I am to do this. Enjoy the week down there with, a, with an entirely different kind of pressure. And 